You're cordially invited to walk the white hallway with Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham, Bill Pertwee, and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. <laughs> the General Assistance Office does many jobs for many departments, and it's hardly surprising that the staff are sometimes affected by the people they work for. A job for the Ministry of Defence, or more specifically the Army, can have startling results, as Richard Lamb has discovered. It has caused Mr. Lennox Brown to regale him with graphic accounts of his wartime exploits. This waste paper bin is my platoon, and that chair is our target, the ammunition dump. In between, the strip of carpet here, the river pole. How long must I stand on the desk with this brolly bun? Until I finish to you represent the Nazi Air Force. Oh. <laughs> A ruthless fighting machine, poised to strike. It's a tucky shirt in. <laughs> ah, this fire is the bridge. I couldn't cross it, you see. Heavily mine. We were under fire from over there, behind the hat stand. My men were tired. Supplies were running out. I did the only thing possible. You packed up and went home. I packed up and went home. No, no. <laughs> Listen, I moved my men along here, beside the filing cabinet, you see. Then, then... I had an uneasy feeling. I felt surprised. What? <laughs> you put your foot in the pole. <laughs> Look, so do you want to hear my wartime exploits, or don't you? Well, since you ask... Bearing I... in mind, the alternative is work. <laughs> do go on. It's fascinating. Now, I realized I'd have to rally my men, and I gathered them round. I remember the words of Henry V, the dashing call. Once more into the breach, I cried. Once more into the breach. They realized what I was getting them into. A pair of breaches. <laughs> I was getting them into the toughest battle of the whole campaign. Suddenly, on our radio, General Garner himself. Gutsy Garner, we call him. I'll never forget his words. They changed the course of the war in Europe. What did he say? He said... Here we are, lovely cup of tea. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Lamb, what are you doing up there? I'm waiting to drop a bomb on Mr. Lennox Brown. <laughs> You are? Mr. Lennox Brown's leading the waste paper bin in a savage attack on his armchair. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Come on down, come on down and drink your tea, too. All right, but don't strike a mess, man. Why not? You're sitting on the ammunition dump. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. Have I spoiled one of your war stories? Probably just as well, Mildred. Mr. Lamb insists on hearing about my wartime exploits, you know, but most of it is still secret. A lot of things I did in the army... Can never be told. I can imagine. <laughs> Were you in the army, Mr. Lamb? No, I was too young for the war. <laughs> when I had my medical for national service, the doctor said I wasn't lively enough to be a soldier. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You're not even lively enough to be a civilian. <laughs> yes, I bet you look smart in your uniform, Mr. Lennox Brown. Well, they used to say so, Mildred. Uh, the Mad Major, they called me. <laughs> On account of my daredevil exploits, you know, my great nerve. Have you got any photos? Oh, somewhere, I dare say. Yeah. I joined the army, Mildred, because I wanted to defend my country. Because I felt it was a challenge. And because they sent the military police to fetch you. Yes. <laughs> I can see we need more discipline in this office, too. Now then, have you finished those army jobs yet? Yes. The first one was a bit tricky, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. It needed a lot of high-level strategy and planning, but I managed it. The Women's Royal Army Corps should get their new underwear today. <laughs> and those tents for the Marines? I ordered the canvas last week, and there should be enough left over to make deck chairs for the officers. <laughs> we also had to check on those Army uh, records. Yeah, but that's an awful job. They go back years. So, orders are orders. Get on with it. Oh, very well. Now then, Mildred. You were asking about my army days. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not that important. They all asked my advice, you know, Mildred. Oh, yes. Eisenhower, Wavell, Patton. What do we do now, Major Lennox Brown, they'd say. And what did you say? Fight them on the beaches, I said. We shall never surrender. If it didn't Churchill say that? Uh, well, later on he did, yeah. <laughs> oh, he knew a good phrase when he heard one, you know. <laughs> so I have no idea you were so important. Yeah, look what I've found in these records, man. Hmm? A copy of your army discharge paper. What? Uh, give that to me, too. <laughs> That's funny. It calls you Private Lennox Brown here. <clears throat> yes, well, I didn't stop at the top, you know. <laughs> to become a major it took me several weeks. But it says, Private Lennox Brown discharged from His Majesty's forces after ten days... 
because of the carbuncle on your... Uh, two. Give me another one. Give to me. Come on, give to me. <laughs> Funny place to have a carbuncle. <laughs> Very awkward that must have been. A carbuncle on the nose is awkward and painful. Now, throw that form away, please. Oh, I couldn't do that. There's a photo here. Look, Mildred. I can easily explain. Now, yeah, you, the... you are a blooming private. Here, and look at those trousers he's wearing. <laughs> They're a bit loose round the armpit. <laughs> <laughs> that is the king's uniform. Well, it certainly didn't fit you. <laughs> but that isn't me in the photograph. Oh, fancy. It's your twin brother, I suppose. Yes. Uh, no, it's my cousin. Uh, yes, that's it. It's my cousin. Well, he's got your ears. And your moustache. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Oh, Sir Gregory. I'm delighted to see you, sir. Delighted. Why is the lamb standing to attention? He's still looking with his umbrella on his shoulder. And he is still... <clears throat> yes. Well, as we're working for the Ministry of Defence, sir, I thought we'd have a, a spot of army display. Good. Yeah. In that case, I can have you both shot. Ah. Yeah. Shot? Yeah. Oh, now, wait a moment. You do like your little jokes, Sir Gregory, don't you? Yeah. You <laughs> sent new tents to the Marines, didn't you? Yeah. And new uh, garments to that women's army unit? Yes, I did all that, Sir Gregory. Did you, lad? <laughs> did you indeed? <laughs> Then wipe that foolish grin off your face. Oh, nothing could have gone wrong, could it? It could and did. The two orders were mixed up. Oh, dear. Uh, then that means... The army women are furious. Their underwear has been made of tent canvas. <laughs> oh, me. That will rub them up the wrong way. <laughs> it isn't funny, Lennox Brown. Not only are these uh, garments made of canvas, they also have printed across the seat... Keep flap closed during high wind. <laughs> I say, what a colossal bloomer. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Hampshire, there's a marine unit trying to pitch camp with 400 pairs of one. No, I can't go on. It's, it's too appalling. I'm very sorry, Sir Gregory. My colleague has been out of his mind recently. Now, look, I'll sort all this out. You'd better, Lennox Barnes. Yes. Oh, I will. And if there's one more bungle in the next year, I'll sort you two out. You'll both be transferred to archives at Ballymucky. Oh, did you notice Sir Gregory was grinding his teeth so hard there were sparks flying out of his mouth? <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> and this time I mean it! By Jove, you're right. <laughs> well, it's all your fault, you know. Well, oh, how could anybody be so stupid? And lots of people do stupid things. Private Lennox Brown. What? <laughs> oh, Yes, well, I was only trying to amuse Mildred. And... <laughs> the mad major, you said. And you were really just a mentally deficient private. <laughs> so, you say no more about that, and I won't mention your tent bungle. Oh, all right, one. Yeah. Well, now, look, we must work together and get these other jobs right. Otherwise... Yes, right, yes. yes. Well, there are these supplies for that Scots regiment, the 24th Highland Foot. Supplies? Mm, the usual monthly rations for 1,000 men to go to their depot in Scotland. Ah, yes. Yes, I do remember that, yes. They're based at Dunfreely. Yes. Yes. And we also have to send them a thousand mosquito hats in Hong Kong. Hong Kong? Mosquito hats? It's very odd. Yes, isn't it? I didn't know mosquitoes wore hats. Yes. <laughs> Two, I meant how could the 24 Highland Foot be in Scotland and in Hong Kong? Oh, well, this hat orders from Hong Kong, all right, and... We've sent supplies to Dunfreely every month for the last three years, and no one's complained. Mildred, come in a moment, will you? Right, I said. Don't like the sound of this, dear. Don't like the sound of it. If we've been sending vast amounts of food to Dunfreely and no one's there, Sir Gregory is not going to be very pleased. Oh, dear. Something wrong, Mr. Lennox Brown? What's cooking? Ah, goose, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> we've been sending supplies to the 24th Highland Fort in Scotland, but now it seems they're actually in Hong Kong. Now, why weren't we told of their move? Oh, but we were, sir. What? I remember it. On a little pink form about a year ago. Well, where is it? Well, I wouldn't know. It was the day you were making paper darts and throwing them out the window at the traffic warden. Grief, <laughs> <laughs> you mean we've lost it? Well, 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 what did it say, Mildred? Can you recall what it said? It said, it said the old regiment was off to the far east. And three men from another unit were going to Dunfreely to maintain the depot. Three men? But we've been sending supplies for a regiment. So, this looks very bad. We must go up there and see what's happening. But go up there? To, to Dunfreely? Well, it's the only way. If we start an inquiry from this end, Sir Gregory and I hear of those wasted supplies. <coughs> now we go this weekend and sort it out quietly. I can't go this weekend. I'm going bus spotting in the high street. <laughs> <laughs> this is a matter of life or... Ballymucky. Now, Mildred, 
Why that maintenance crew at Dunfreely? Tell them we're coming. Lucky house, sir. I can't understand it. Three men alone in an army camp, using all that food. Whatever are they up to? Hello, campers. <laughs> and welcome to Dunfreely Holiday Camp. Your own from home with a pure ozone. <laughs> If your holiday starts today, you've got it coming to you. If you're leaving today, you've had it. <laughs> Study your brochure for details of all the fun. Happy camping! <laughs> got them all in their up, Fred? Yeah. But why? They've got to stay indoors. Because these blooming ministry snoopers are due here any minute. If they sus we was running their army depot as holiday camp, feeding the campers on government nosh, well, they could turn nasty. I put back all them army signposts, like you said. Did you move that to bingo notice from the officer's mess? Yeah, and I took the open-air dancing sign off the parade ground. <laughs> what about all them kids playing on the assault course? Well, I sent them up the sick bay. Told them to play doctors and nurses. <laughs> we'll get rid of these geezers in an hour. If we can just kid them that long, we'll go on making a fortune for the rest of the year. Harry, something odd happened at the restaurant. They've taken a sign down that says Silver Star Shine Grill and put up one that says Natty. Yeah, yeah. Now, listen, Pooh, there's a couple of twits coming down from Whitehall. What? We've got to cover up the holiday camp and make it look like an army depot again. You're joking. You can't. We've got to. Fred and George and me, we're still soldiers. For this little, we get ten years. Yeah. But you'll never get away with it. Of course we will. Me and Fred will pose as officers in charge. Yeah. In those red striped blazers and kiss me quick hat. <laughs> no, I've got a couple of posh tunics we can use. Uh, and we've got the campers indoors doing puzzles. These blokes will never see them. Uh, have you forgotten Miss Gala Day? The bathing beauty finals. Miss Dunna Freely of 1971. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the knobbly knees contest. <laughs> All on the parade ground opposite. Stoop. I had forgotten. Prue, nip over and get them to start later. If they can't, we'll just have to keep the white old boys away from the window. If they fall for this, they need head transplants. And Prue, find yourself a uniform. That dress is okay for the nightclub, but it ain't very army. Well, I'll try. Cool. Here's George with the van. That'll be them. Yeah. Fetch them from the station in the van so they can't see out the windows. Look, get your tunic on quick. These aren't army ones, but they look like officers. Here, yeah, but yours says Roxy on the shoulder. Ah, oh, stop moaning and hurry up. There he is, Harry. The biggest pair of nanas you ever saw. Oh, wow. We're in luck. Wheel them in, Georgie boy. Uh, this way, gentlemen. Oh, oh, there you go. Sir, come on in, gents. Make yourselves at home. Welcome to the officer's mess. Oh, thank you. Yes. Well, now, my name is Lennox Brown, and uh, this is my colleague here, Mr. Lamb. How do you do? Lovely day for fighting. Yes. Uh, I'm the general officer commanding, but you can call me Harry. And this here's the brigadier. Pleased to meet you. The name's Fred. Oh, how do you do? Yes. Well, I must say we're a little surprised to find officers here. We thought there was just a maintenance crew, a corporal and two privates. Yeah, what's your game? Don't you know a cop when you see one? Fred! You'll have to forgive the brigadier, he gets a bit hasty. Uh, why do you think there was no officers here? Well, we heard the 24th Highland Foot were in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah boss. right. Well, I don't quite understand it. I mean, are they in Hong Kong or not? Yeah, your 24th Highland Foot are in Hong Kong. We're your 23rd Highland Foot. Really? Yeah, we was moved in here when they went out east. Didn't you get the message? Uh, oh, yes, uh, we may have done, yes. Was it the uh, requisite defence ministry form 876B stroke 29C? Oh, uh, yeah, it was one of them. Two? Yeah, there were one or two of those floating about. <laughs> the shiny paper, they flew rather well, remember? <laughs> <laughs> well, that solves the mystery, yes. They're not the 24th island foot, you see. They're the 23rd island foot. Yes, the whole thing's back on a proper footing. <laughs> We were worried, you see. We thought the supplies we sent you wouldn't have reached you if you hadn't received them because you were somewhere else and you wouldn't have known you weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, cheerio, gentlemen. See you again sometime. Uh, well, now, there are a couple of points that still puzzle me. Yeah? Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Uh, the 23rd Highland Foot of a Scots regiment. Uh, you, you don't sound very Scots to me. Uh, no. Well, it's the military college, you see. At Sanders, they knock all the accents out and learn to talk proper. <laughs> Ah, I see, yes. But there's also the matter of the chap who brought us from the station. Uh, a little query. Do you mind? <laughs> fella. Yes. Well, I wondered, why has his hat got Raver written across the front? <laughs> ah, no, that's R-A-V-E-R. Yes. Stands for Royal Army Van Engineering Reserve. 
Uh, he looks after the van, you see. I'm sorry, Harry. I can't find a uniform anywhere. Oh, uh, hello, Prue. Uh, these are the men from the ministry. Uh, uh, gentlemen, this lady is, um, uh, she's Commandant of the Women's Royal Army Corps. I was? Commandant, love. How do you do? How do you do, Commandant Love? Uh, she was saying... <laughs> she was saying she's mislaid her uniform, and, and, and that's why she's wearing that uh, low-cut dress. By Jove, it is low-cut. Must be awkward on parade. Yeah, especially on the command fallout. <laughs> <laughs> My word, there's nothing like the sophisticated repartee of the officer's mess. <laughs> I say, that's rather strange. Going past the window there, are the women with bingo cards? Oh, God. Uh, well, they're not really women. Are they? No, they're soldiers. In disguise. Special security training. Designed to fool the enemy. They'd certainly fool me. <laughs> what about all those children? What are they doing in an army camp? Children? Yeah. Well, I suppose you could call them children. They're, they're boy soldiers, see? But some are in prams. Oh. <laughs> well, you're never too young for the modern army. Yes, well, uh, I'll take you gents to the station then, right? Just, 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 just a moment, just a moment. There seems to be some sort of show starting out there on the parade ground. Oh, blimey, the beauty contest. And the knees. Oh, what's going on? There are lots of old men rolling up their trouser legs. Ah, <laughs> uh, vaccinations. Huh? <laughs> They're having their vaccinations. Some more of our brave lads going out east. I say, lots of girls in swimsuits. There's certainly plenty to do in the modern army. There's something very fishy here, too. Uh, now then, gents, no need to jump to conclusions. I'm not jumping anywhere, sir. But you told me this gentleman's a brigadier. So I ruddy am. Well, let me tell you, sir. The silver buttons on your coat clearly say, Bournemouth Zoo. <laughs> they've, they've rumbled us, Harry. Yes, we have. We see what's going on very clearly. Don't we, too? Yeah, yes, we do. What is going on? <laughs> These men are imposters. They're running this place as some sort of a, sort of a holiday camp. So that's why the sentry was eating candy floss. Gentlemen, I shall report this to the highest authority, if not higher. Oh, by Jove, yes. Quite right, one. They're a pack of impostors. You're a pack of impostors. You'll hang from the highest yard arm in all the shots. Belt up or I'll do you. <laughs> no, you put it like that. Uh, perhaps they aren't impostors. Well, nonsense, nonsense. Of course they are. We're a sort of brigadier in plimsolls. Okay, clever Dick, you're on to us. And that's our luck for you. Lock them up, Harry. In the cells. Yeah, that'll do for a start. Prisoners of escort falling. Is that us? Look us up. How oh, dare you? How oh, dare you? What's the charge? No charge. It's all free. Take them away. Take them away. <laughs> oh, Juan, I can't take much more of this. Left to rot in a prison cell. Lost to the world outside. Never seeing the sunshine. Never hearing the birds. Oh, don't trust to. We've only been here an hour. <laughs> so we might be here for days. What do you think they'll do with us? Whatever they do, moaning won't help. And that meal was awful. Army Russians do. Minestrone, fish fingers, jam roll, that's not bad. It is when they're all mixed up on the same tin plate. <laughs> See, what's that you're scribbling in your diary? Oh, my prison memoirs. The Sunday papers pay well to this sort of thing. <laughs> How do you keep so cheerful? Well, there's no sense in panicking, too. They're not likely to kill us. No, but Sir Gregory will if we're not in the office on Monday. <laughs> Glory. I hadn't thought of that. You're right. You're right. We must do something. What can we do? Well, we'll have to escape. But how? We could tie our sheets together and lower ourselves in the window. You know, like they did in that film on TV. That wouldn't work for us, one. Well, why not? We're on the ground floor. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've got it. I've yeah. got it. We dig a tunnel. What we? Well, we have to improvise, won't we? Yeah. Oh, some of the floorboards are loose. Now, we can lever them up with our brollies and scoop up the earth with our bowler hats. You see? Now, come on, two. Yeah. We'll tunnel to freedom. Yeah. Tommy, this isn't my week. Well, what's the telegram say? It's a signal from Army Headquarters. The 24th Isle of Foot are coming back here next week. Oh, but they can't. It's right in the middle of our busy season. This signals to tell us to have the place ready for them. But the beds are booked up to November. You said they'd be gone till spring. Well, someone's changed their mind, haven't they? So what are we going to do about it? Here. Am I seeing things? That floorboard is bending. It's bending up. And that one. Well, perhaps it's mice. <laughs> Come on, two. We're free. Yeah, it's worth fun. That mouse is wearing a bowler hat. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me help you out. Uh, Easy, does it? Oh, thank you. Who's here? Something's gone wrong. Dear me. 
This isn't the turnip field, is it? <laughs> Tunneling your way out, eh? Shall I thump the Mary? No, no, they're our friends. They're going to do us a big favour. Nice to see you, gents. Sit down, have a cigar, have three. Hey, don't touch that cigar till maybe poison. No need to go tunnelling and get your clothes all dirty. We're sending you home in the morning. Have a drink. That's very kind of you. Yeah, wait till, wait, wait. They're trying to butter us up for some reason. Fact is, we're glad you popped in. We've got a little problem. Really? The 24th Isle of Foot have been posted back here. Ah, then that's the end of your little game. Not quite. Because back in London, you're going to get that posting cancelled. Keep them abroad for another six months. I suppose you think you can bribe us, eh? Well, British civil servants don't make deals. Oh, but they do make bloomers. <laughs> well, you two do. What do you mean by that, sir? You sent suppliers here for a year after the regiment left. Well, the posting slip got lost. Yeah, and if your boss finds out, he'll tell you to do the same. And if the regiment come next week, he's going to find out. Oh, he's right once, Sir Gregory will go mad. Never mind, never mind. We must expose this racket. But he'll send us to Ballymucky. And we must denounce these men. Eventually. How you're talking. But a time, it's all we want, so the kids won't lose their holidays. We'll have the camp ready for the regiment at Christmas. Don't stand there unravelling your knitting, gal. Where are Lennox Brown and Lamb? They're not here, sir. I'm aware of that. But I don't wish to know where they are not. I want to know where they are. Well, they may be in the park, sir. What? Well, they say they think they're sitting in deck chairs. Oh, 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 Sir Gregory. Uh, oh, what a lovely surprise. Lennox Brown. Lamb, where were you this morning? Oh, uh, well, now, a job for the army, sir. Yes, inspecting one of their bases. And why are you covered in earth? Uh, we were in this hole, you said. Uh, yes, yes, it was a bit of a hole, Sir Gregory. Yes, uh, very dreary place, wasn't it? Yes. But uh, we're back now and ready to chase up our uh, other jobs. Chase up? Don't yes. you mean louse up? Oh, no, no, Sir Gregory. No, no, no. We're very keen on this army work. So we are, really. Look, uh, we'd like to do more. We thought of taking on posting. Yeah, postings. That's my job. Ah, oh, well, now, we, we feel you need a break, sir. You've been looking very tired lately. You've not had a holiday for three weeks. And there are great black <laughs> rings round your eyes. <laughs> Those are my spectacles, lamb. <laughs> If you really want extra work, you can take on postings by all means. But I don't want to see any bungles. Oh, you won't see them, sir. Don't worry. Uh, yes, leave it all to us, sir. All oh, right, all right. There's no need to push me out of the door. We've done it, We've done it. Now, quick. Get that list of overseas bases. I've got it here. Good. Now, we must signal the regiment now, or they'll start for home. Where should we post them? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere. Anywhere, as long as it's really remote. Some little island far away over the ocean. Marboni. Marboni? Uh, Marboni lies over the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Oh, no time to explain, Mildred. Signal the 24th Highland Foot in Hong Kong. They're to go to Marboni at once. So, you see, Mildred, we just had to cooperate. We couldn't tell you last week we were too busy. But as the troops are now in Marboni, we thought you'd better know. Oh, it's a bit naughty, isn't it? Well, I Oh, our chaps get more time in the sunshine, and the people who book for Dunn freely get their holidays. And we'll fix those villains later. And think how pleased Mabroni will be to get a crack British regiment. Yes. Where are they? Let me get my hands on them. Oh, Sir Gregory, nothing wrong, I trust. Wrong? Wrong? wrong. Do you realize what you've done, do you? Remind us, Sir Gregory. You sent the 24th Island foot to Mabroni. That's right, sir. It's a British base in the Indian Ocean. It is not there. You mean someone's moved it? I mean it is not a British base. It's been independent for six years. The base was closed. Oh, dear. Perhaps we looked at an out-of-date list. Hey, come to think of it, it did have America down as a British colony. <laughs> Man, you've landed British troops on an independent island. They'll think they've been invaded. Oh, no. There'll be a, an international incident. This, this could be the start of World War Three. Any chance of a posting to Ballymacca? <laughs> Cabinet are in a turmoil. They're afraid that... Ah! It's 12 o'clock. Quick! Switch on the news. Right behind, sir. Time for the news headlines from John Curl. There's been big world reaction to the surprise arrival of British troops in Marboni. Oh, I knew it. The president of Marboni has cabled his thanks to the British government, and the United Nations Secretary General has sent congratulations. What? It's learnt that Marboni had asked for assistance to deal with a sudden plague of bongo flies. Bongo flies? <laughs> bongo flies. Bongo flies are tropical insects which destroy crops and eat all clothing in sight. 
Mabonius' president was amazed and delighted when British troops arrived so promptly, even before his message went on. <laughs> Since they arrived, the troops have been marching around the island and have literally stamped out the insects. <laughs> and their commander has helped to Mabonius' citizens who lost all their clothes to the bongo flies. He'll supply new clothes for the island's men immediately and for the women within a few weeks. <laughs> I've heard enough, my dear chaps. I'm proud of you. This will do wonders for British prestige. And to think for a moment there, I doubted you. Oh, well, don't be too hard on yourself, sir. Ah, oh, I think you made a mistake. And actually, you'd, you'd rushed in those soldiers to stamp on the president's flies. <laughs> Well done, both of you. Thank you, Sir Gregory. What's going on, man? Uh, Sir Gregory, just one small point. Now, would you be very annoyed if we end up to, uh, well, uh, a tiny error? Oh, you know me, Lennox Brown. I'm not an ogre. Could we have that in writing, Sir Gregory? Uh, <laughs> Look, supposing we told you, sir, that due to a slight oversight, uh, we'd gone on sending supplies to Scotland after the regiment left some. What, uh, for a few days, you mean? A shade longer than that, Squiggy. Oh, uh, a week? Well, a few weeks. Not a month. No, no. A year. <laughs> well, people do make mistakes. Yes, I, I nearly made one myself once. Surely. Yeah. Yeah, we will say no more about it. This Mumbani thing is a real triumph. The PM will want to congratulate me. <laughs> well done, well done. Two, you see what this means? We're right off the hook. Those blackmailing rogues have lost their hold on us. We can post the troops back to Scotland. Well, I don't know. They seem quite happy in Marbone. Let the people who've booked have their holidays first. But we'll see those villains don't profit. I've got their names and army numbers here. And a new list of army bases. Good. Now, I spotted a likely one earlier on, too. Yes. Now, what was it called? Wait a minute. Uh, here we are. Misery Bay. Mm. <laughs> ah, here it is. Population nine. Including eight penguins. <laughs> <laughs> Average weekly rainfall, two and a half feet. <laughs> yeah, must be those posting forms, too, wouldn't it? <laughs> this will teach them. Yes, they thought they were very smart, didn't they? <laughs> They're about to learn that smart lads should go far. <laughs> eh? What? You like it? <laughs> Thank you, On parade as the men from the ministry were Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. Also featured were Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham and Bill Pertwee. The program was written by Edward Taylor and John Graham and produced by Edward Taylor.